volcano on Hawaii's Big Island has been spewing lava and toxic gases for three weeks, and it's become hazardous in recent days. Pamai Emsley lives and works near Kilauea and joins me now from Pahau. Uh, Pamai, good to have you with us. What's it like living next to the world's most active volcanoes? Hi, Aloha. Thank you for having me. Um, it's scary it's nerve-wracking but it's also awe-inspiring and beautiful it's a part of nature that not many people get to experience so it's talk to me about there. what it's... you've seen you live and work just a few kilometers from kilauea yeah um so much of our school is has been affected by it our school was shut down because there are fingers of lava that are coming out of the fissures going towards the school. So as soon as that first fissure erupted back on, I believe, May 4th, our school was shut down and closed off and access was not admitted. And so witnessing that part of it has been pretty scary and seeing the pictures of all the kids and their families who have had to move out of their homes. but were able to get pictures of the lava before they had to evacuate. It's we just saw a flash on, on the screen a second ago, a picture of some of the artwork from your kids' class that we understand that you teach first <laughs> yeah. graders. What has it been like kind of hurting these students through this massive volcano erupting? And what do they think about all this? Uh, they're pretty resilient, little, little, little kids and they have and their experiences have ranged from well now we have people living with us and camping out with us and we are helping them to we have had to evacuate twice out of our our house because it came in flows right and nobody actually knew what was going on from day to day which fissure would erupt which crack would erupt and so several of our students er evacuated from one lava zone to another lava zone only to have to re-evacuate. So it, it really runs the whole gamut of experience. And we've and been hearing, Pamai, a lot about these toxic gases, about the ash in the air, the smoke. What have you experienced? Because uh, I understand some of the symptoms are itchy eyes and skin irritation. Yeah, so those of us who live very close to the areas, there are there's a sulfur dioxide that's being emitted and also a hydrogen sulfide that has just started to kind of make itself its presence known as the water as as the lava enters the water. And so it's been difficult. We've had a high increase um, rate of just if you can hear it in my voice, it, it gets stuck in your in your in your throat. It it gives headaches. The the children I've noticed are a lot more lethargic and and they just take a little bit more um, attention. You need you need to get your water. You need to drink your water. I know you don't want to drink your water, but you have to drink your water. Those kinds of reminding ourselves that it is present. And it is dangerous. And we do have our vapor masks ready and does, What's yeah, the emergency <laughs> management been like on the island? Are you guys getting a lot of notifications, ways to deal with a lot of the symptoms that you just mentioned there, hydration, that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah, the government has been pretty responsive, and I think more than just the government, but um, the community helping each other out and, and getting that information across. Like, um, I did not purchase my vapor mask myself. My brother in law from Oahu who's they're not in any danger but they're still sending supplies that we need to and the government has set up many like just free distribution points for those types of things um our campus has now been not overtaken but because the school shut down now there's an empty space and the civil defense is using it for seismic monitoring and air quality monitoring so they have 
trucks that just go up and down the neighborhoods reading the air quality and reporting that back to civil defense who they're they're you know they're they're a local small local government so they really do care about our safety and i feel that they're taking it seriously you mentioned Pamai, that that this is you know it's been exciting but it's also given you a lot of anxiety uh, certainly, there's been a lot of a, a little eruptions here and there, a few big eruptions. Is there fears on the island? Kind of what's the mood among the locals there? Are there worries that there could be something even bigger that can happen with Kilauea? It does. We have a, we have a geothermal plant over here that has kind of been a source of contention for the community for, a, you know, since it got built. And so now as there is lava... An, encroaching on their property. A lot of concerns are coming out about the possibility of an uncontrolled and uncontrollable, really, uh, release of hydrogen sulfide gas, which is poisonous. And from the people who are not chemists <laughs> and the people who don't really understand the effects of it, like me, it's it's nerve wracking. What what are we gonna do? What what is the blast radius? Because we hear different um, estimates, like from three miles to twelve miles, and just it, it's hard to get a bearing on exactly what the dangers are in in such a um, volatile environment. Absolutely. Well, Pamai Emsley, the world has been watching in fascination as we have been seeing these pictures out of Hawaii, but I'm sure it's uh, not always fascinating for the locals that have to deal with the effects of all that. We thank you for coming on the program and giving us a picture of what y'all have been dealing with. So thanks for being with us.